Here I go off topic again. Hundreds and hundreds of people over the years have said that my voice reminds them of Jimmy Stewart. I don't see it, my family don't see it, but I will take it as a compliment. Certainly he is one of my favorite movie stars. I loved him in the westerns, but I particularly liked the one I saw when I was a boy about 1952 called Carbine Williams, when he uh, developed the M1 carbine while he was a prisoner. Check that out if you've never seen it. Now back to the business at hand here. I'm set up uh, to start welding this other side here. You can see I've got it clamped with all kinds of clamps. I'm just going to work my, my way around, not unlike what I did on the larger end. This is my last weld. I've already cut it off, so I'll put the weld right here. And then uh, that welding's all done, but I need a tack right here at that joint and right here. Don't really need it at all. It's pretty darn rigid the way it is. Here it is, all mounted and almost ready to go. It's ready for me to cut out a cover and get it fastened. And then, of course, it has to be painted, but there'll be a cover something like this. This isn't the right one. That's a different size. And it'll be hinged on this side so it will open like this. If I hinge it on this side, I think I got gravity working against me where it can pinch me in the fingers while I'm, I'm working on the thing. I've got to say, as crude and amateurish as this business is right here, made out of wood, it actually worked too good to be true. So now i got to make the cover. And again, this is a uh, seems amateurish in that I'm just going to trace around this and I'm going to do that with a fine point uh, sharpie because I couldn't really see the scribe marks too well but I could put bluing on it. That's probably what I should have done to start with and there is no economical way of laying this out on here. It won't fit that way so uh, I'm just going to probably throw the rest of this away. I got it free anyway. So I'll lay that on there Go around with the Sharpie, take it over to the bandsaw. That's quite a bit of cutting. 20 minutes worth at least. There it is. Although it looks like a violin case. Kind of a stubby. Too stubby, too wide for a violin, but all right, maybe a mandolin. I don't know. So uh, the sawing is done and now I have to run it around the belt sander and it'll be again hinged like this. I belt sanded the periphery and trying to decide, I got a million hinges but you never got exactly the right one. I could use two of these, maybe go something like that. But I found this continuous hinge and really this is me meant to be spot welded on but this is way too heavy for my spot welder so it's going to go like this just the right length actually how fortuitous huh and then uh, these where are they I was going to use these big pop rivets with the with these hinges but I believe I'll use the eighth inch pop rivets about four of them here and four of them here and and I got some knobs. I'll put a knob here and then I got to use a magnetic catch or something. All right. I got to quit for the day. I'm hot and tired. See you tomorrow. Howdy again. It's a new day and I'm revived after two cups of coffee and a good night's sleep. And I'm back to work. And uh, thank you for watching my videos. And, uh, you know, I've got an awful lot of them. Tell your friends about them. And remember that... I appreciate the comments, but I just can't answer all of them. There's too many. Shane, there's too many. Well, what I've been doing here, I've been at it for a few minutes already. I have clamped the continuous uh, steel hinge onto the cover. I've laid out four holes, one, two, three, four, and all ready to uh, pop rivet the first one in. I've drilled two out of the four holes. And use a quality pop riveter, not one of those 
four dollar ones or you will be hating it. Wow. You think that would hurt? You ought to try doing it with a cheap one. I'll put in uh, the other one and then I'm going to uh, drill the final two holes and then check for alignment and all that. But notice how I've held it with a couple of uh, the long nose genuine uh, vice grips, which are uh, some of my favorites. All right, and this is what it looks like from the back side. If you get shavings between the two pieces when you're drilling, be sure and get the shavings out of there. Now one thing I wanted to tell you is that, for instance, an eighth inch pop rivet, which is probably the most common size used around the house or, or yard, uh, be sure and use a number 30 drill bit rather than a 1 8 inch drill bit. It will save you a lot of heartache. It allows the rivet to just go in freely like this instead of just struggling with it. Alright, four rivets in place here and now I need to rivet it down here. That hinge isn't going to work to mount it inside of the guard so it'll be externally mounted. Number 30 drill. I'll drill one hole, put a rivet in, drill another hole, put a rivet in, check to see that it swings okay, and then do the final two. I guess before I fasten this on, I should show you here that I notched this out from between uh, this point and this point, the length of the hinge, such that... It's only about 50 thousandths deep. Sen senseless, probably. But the purpose is so that the lid will, will come down virtually all the way rather than be propped up the thickness of the hinge material. All right, we got uh, four pop rivets in place here. Opens and closes nicely, but man, is that door heavy. I wish I would have had some lighter sheet metal for that. Wow, oh, that heavy. And I went down to the store and I got a can of primer. I like that color, but that it is primer. So it's just about ready to clean up and prime after I install this. I don't like the looks of that, but I looked at the hardware store. They had all different kinds, but this is probably the easiest one to mount because it's adjustable. And it'll be something like that. And then the knob. Probably this one someplace here so it doesn't interfere with this. So let me do that and uh, get it primed. Way too gaudy ring-a-ding. So I'm going to use the black plastic one. Progressing nicely now, finally. Well, it's virtually done and ready for the paint shop. So here's what I got. I'm going to clean it up real good. Get the knob in place, which I'll take off to paint. And I used a magnetic uh, catch here. I don't know if that's a strong enough magnet that's going to work until I mount it. If, if it isn't, I'll make a change. But I had that one in stock. I might have to cut those screws off. And I'm hoping that this doesn't interfere with the belt. Because it is uh, intrusive of the, of the uh, guard. So I may have to change that after I get it mounted. All right, off to the paint shop for the primer, and I'm not going to show that. Next time you see it, it'll be in its final coat of light gray. I interrupt this video to make uh, an amendment, a modification, uh, a change in what I have been doing, or I want to explain something that originally, some time ago, I cut the cord right here, as you recall, and I lament doing that. If only I had done it at a different position, but that uh, is number 14 gauge 4 wire. And the reason it's 4 wire is I have a reversing switch. Well, initially what I did is I put these plugs in here, 
just as a dummy. They weren't really hooked up. And the purpose of that was just to show you the way I like to sometimes make connections so that I can quickly take them apart. But of course, this is a three wire and I need a four wire. Now I looked and looked and looked, and I'm going to redo this, uh, for a four wire plug. And generally they're twist lock, but I could not find one. I looked in Wisconsin and Illinois. I suppose I could have ordered it from Granger or something like that. But let me cut real quickly to a video that I took at Ace Hardware showing what was available at a great cost. So uh, I'm going to go with plan B here momentarily after you look at the clip. So here it is. I'm just inserting this bit of information into this video. The uh, orange plugs that I showed wired up, actually are just dummy plugs on this lathe because you can see they're three wire and I need four wire plugs. These aren't mine, these are brand new ones and by the way, these even these cost plenty. Let's see, they're six dollars each. But in order to buy four prongers, I have to get the 30 amp, which of course I'm not going to, and they're huge bodacious things. And they cost 29 and 25, I should say 30 and 35 respectively. And because of that, it's almost cost prohibitive, so I'm just going to take these off the machine. And uh, there they are on the, on the shelf. You can see how much cheaper they are. But I'm going to take those off the machine and wire it direct without benefit of, of plugs, which I spoke of earlier. So sorry about that misinformation and yes this is way off topic I know it but speed up if you can't stand it and many people are saying I'm too verbose but so be it but I need number 14 for rubber cord I also checked in Wisconsin and Illinois at all the different stores locally I'm able to find number 12 for way too uh, heavy uh, unneeded and uh, difficult to wire larger wire into a switch such as this which is very cramped as well as the the small uh, uh, junction box on the motor so instead of using rubber cord which may not be uh, according to uh, electrical code, uh, local code, I'm not sure. Uh, this is what I'm going to do. I went to Ace Hardware and I bought three feet, and that's even more than what I need, of Greenfield. Now you may call it BX, but I believe it's only BX if uh, the uh, wire is included in it, but this is just really flexible conduit is what it is. Extremely difficult to cut and hazardous. I almost lacerated the clerk when I laid this down at Ace Hardware to to, uh, to purchase it and it it went like that at her and of course at that time there was a large jagged piece on there so I know I'm telling you too much but that's what I'm going to use and that will also will ground it and in order to use that I already had this in stock that's a, a right angle connector for uh, three this is three eighths uh, Greenfield or I, I'm sure there's other names for it. That's probably the original manufacturer. And then I'll use this uh, BX connector at the motor, and I'll have to drill a hole in there for this. Actually, this is what I'm going to use at the motor, the right angle, and this will come out of the, of the uh, reversing switch. And I'm going to go into this box here. Which won't be particularly easy to do, and boy, that's a rat's nest if I've ever seen one. And it was full of chips. Look at the chips down there. And what I'll do then is I have uh, at least four colors here of uh, number 14 stranded wire that I will use. So I'm going to write down the color code and everything, and I'm going to get at that. And I'm not going to show you that. I'll, uh, I'll show you the completed job, but this is an hour's worth of tedious work. I know I said I was cutting away, but let me uh, make a few clarifications here. When you're working on something like this drum switch, this reversing switch, there are just so many connections. You do not want to lose track of what you're doing or where the wires go. So I do two things. I make myself a little wiring diagram, and then I take uh, pictures as well. Now somebody made fun of me and said, that's stupid. Why are you taking a picture? You already have a video of it. Well, I'm doing that as a suggestion uh, to you viewers out there and the way you work because you know I've gotten lost many many times on wiring uh, long before 
cell phones were around and uh, you know at some point you, you'd give uh, fifty dollars for a picture of what you're doing at the risk of angering many people who think I over explain things uh, uh, I want to stop a minute and tell you how I put this hole into this cover plate for the connector now that's really no easy job to put a hole that size in uh, in sheet metal how are you going to do that well on the job, of course, they would have a, a set of knockouts for that, but I don't have that size. Those are electrician sizes that are needed. These are just common fractional sizes, so those would do no good. But I love this Christmas tree bit, and uh, you, you got all, the, or a step bit, whatever you want to call it, for making that size. And I just drilled down until it fit this size, and it only took minutes. However, that's a $50 or $60 bit from Greenlee. I taped the package back together because I did have to bandsaw it apart and this type of packaging was invented by uh, sadists. I don't know how an 80 year old lady would ever open something like this as if she'd buy a three times tougher green leaf. There's no good way to cut Greenfield and uh, BX is even worse because you risk damaging the uh, electrical connectors in there. But at the hardware store they had a little device you crank it. And when I asked Bob to use that because I was going to tape it uh, and he was the man that gave me the, uh, uh, the Craftsman Crescent Wrench, remember in that, that uh, one video. Nice guy, but he, had, he said, I don't know how to use that because he hasn't been working there very long. So he pulls out a hacksaw. Of course, it's got coarse teeth instead of fine. And he's working on the edge of a metal shelf. I'm trying to hold it, help him hold it, and uh, thinking he's going to slip and, and get me. And I can't tell you how much blood I drew as a 16-year-old boy cutting BX cable at uh, the hardware store. So if you got a vise and a fine tooth, you will have some success by this method, but, but what electrician is going to have, uh, see how it catches, is going to have a vise. Another way of doing it is to, why am I showing this? Uh, you simply kink it and then you can cut it with a, a side cutters or something like that, but it's never easy. When I started this wiring job, I had no intention of going into this detail, but I, I opened up this rat's nest here, and uh, all of this tape has lost its uh, adhesive, and it was just hanging there, and nothing was soldered, just twisted, no wire nuts, no nothing. And even look at this fuzz, I would have cut that all off. So if there's such a thing as a hammer and chisel electrician, he had his way with this motor. Well, I'm glad to get this done. It took 45 minutes. It's just about lunchtime. But, uh, and these connectors were a recent gift from, uh, from an anonymous donor along with many other electrical items. But the only thing that made this easy is that I'm working at, uh, well, I'm standing up and I got excellent lighting. And that makes it so much easier than uh, being on your knees in a dark corner of a shop someplace. So where it's all greasy so it's not a bad job and I got this routed just right now I need to go up onto the switch end by the way the power has been cut here during the whole job naturally be sure and allow plenty of extra wire and these will be cut off and stripped to the area correct length and uh, terminals applied and the cover put back on and I'm not going to show all of that thank goodness you're thinking and there it is, all four wires run, and it's connected with the green field, so it's grounded, ready to go. I'll put the cover on, and we'll fire it up. Okay, let me test fire the thing. Watch it spark out and blow up on me. No, oh, it works in forward. Works in reverse. All right, finally I'm done with the electrical part. Back to the original content of the video, which, of course, is the guard. Welcome back. This is the final day of the build, and it's been a week. Knob attached, screwed in, with a singular drop of safety lock, one of my favorites. Let me uh, put the magnet on, and uh, it's done. 
Does this help you understand why I notched the carcass here? To compensate for the thickness of the hinge. Alright, let's go out in the garage to the South Bend lathe and get it mounted up. I'm out in the garage at the South Bend lathe and I have it mounted or semi mounted and you know when you work without a drawing and you don't plan ahead you always run into interferences and I have done just that and uh, although this is mounted it won't close because the shaft sticks out a little bit too far and I had kind of semi anticipated that but it's a little bit uh, worse than what I thought also I have to set the entire guard a little farther back because on the bottom pulley the, the back of the pulley is going to hit the guard according to that original center punch mark that I made so the guard will have to be set back just a little bit and that can be done just by making the uh, some shorter bushings that are uh, right behind these bolts be between the guard and the cast and the casting around back and that's simple enough to do and I probably can get by just with uh, using double washers back there flat washers rather than the bushings that I've already been using now this pulley uh, first of all it has not been uh, painted uh, and I doubt I ever will because it's going to be hidden that way I have an insight into what uh, the original color looked like now uh, I didn't put the belt on yet either but it looks like I've got clearance here from the magnetic catch but not a whole lot this bolt here just barely clears the pulley but it'll be alright so back to the business at hand here you can see that when I put a straight edge across the hub here I'm hitting how much about an eighth of an inch but if I set this back another eighth of an inch I've got at least a half uh, a quarter inch sticking out that wants to uh, hit the guard and you can already see where it did hit the guard so I know where the center of this is now how to solve the problem without cutting this off oh I could do that I could face this off and uh, it would work but here's my other solution although I'm back to a rather big job several hours work to do that so let's take a look at how I'm gonna solve this problem if you looked at the other video where I did uh, the Logan guard, you, you will remember I used the cupcake solution. And I put one of those on and I got plenty more of those. And I went through the whole uh, routine of uh, stealing this from my wife. Do you remember that? So I've been thinking about this a long time. Other solutions and sometimes I overanalyze. But here's uh, some things that I came up with over the last uh, couple months since I made the other one. But Well, I bought this guard that's off of a grinder that was at a garage sale for fifth, uh, 25 cents is what it was and that's about what I need that that bulge and uh, what I thought I would do here is is cut this out and then either tack weld it on or, or some way fasten it on there but I don't know that looks kind of makeshift sure. then another thought that I had I went to the dollar store where everything cost a dollar and I bought this uh, Luché, is that what they call it in France? Stainless steel and what I was going to do is that that's just about right give it a nice chrome finish too I would bend the handle straight like that probably and uh, hold it on with one screw of course I have to drill a large hole here probably with a hole saw so that's a possibility now a viewer told me in one of the comments he said why don't you go to the farm store or the trailer store and buy a hubcap off of a boat trailer and I went and looked at those and those would work fine and they're stamped steel they came in different sizes they were about seven to ten dollars but you had to buy a pair of them and cheap as I am I went to Menards and this was uh, found in the section where they sell uh, fencing, uh, chain link fencing, and this is actually a cap for a fence post. 
That's about two and a quarter inches or so, but if I could find the right size uh, hole saw, saw that out, of course, I've already painted the thing, so that's going to be a, a bit of a pain. And this is die cast, so I don't believe this is going to be bendable uh, if I cut slits in there and make tabs. So I'm not sure how I will fasten that, but that would give it just the nice finishing touch and it's kind of pretty and maybe I wouldn't even paint it. It's not chrome, it's just buffed uh, zinc. I don't think it's aluminum, I think it's uh, a zinc die casting. So I think this is the route I will go, but of course I have to take the pop rivets off so that I can saw that big hole and then uh, after I reinstall it I'll have scratches all over it and have to repaint the whole thing. So that sets me back almost a whole day. I've got to level with you. I'm starting to get sick of this project and I thought I'd be done by now so I'm going to half step just a little bit and uh, I think when I held this up a few minutes ago you, you could see my face in there and, and the, I said this was buffed and it's, it, I don't believe it was buffed it was probably tumbled and that's a tumbled uh, finish on there with an abrasive. Anyway, uh, I'm going to half step here and rather than uh, cut a big hole and use one of these I'm going to uh, just cut a hole and allow that quarter inch of moving part to stick out. Now I know the safety Nazis are going to be all over me because the old whole idea here was to make a guard without any moving parts. And that's the purpose of the back here, so that you can't get your fingers in there. So now it will no longer be OSHA approved. But let me uh, drill that hole about three and three quarters. I've got to take it down the basement and probably take the cover off, take those rivets out in order to do that, but about one and a three quarters is going to give me the clearance that I need, so I think I'll do that. However, if I don't like that or I get complaints and have to go back here with uh, plan A, I would have to do the whole thing over one more time. So, trying to expedite things here, so I think I'm going to go the uh, lazy route. One hour has passed and I've been busy, but I want to take just a little pause here. Today is Memorial Day 2016 to thank all you veterans who uh, served us, especially those that are wounded or disabled in any way. And so I got the flag on display here and I just had to tell a little story here. This of course is a Chinese American flag, but uh, when I took it out of the wrapper, it curled up, you know, and it won't lay flat. So I've got, I got a tape down here, but my neighbor Tommy, who owns Smokey the Cat, when he buys a batch of flags, and he's quite a patriot and a, and a veteran, but before he puts a flag on his boys' graves, he has two boys that are dead, he irons them because he likes a nice straight flag. All right, on with the show. As you can see, it pays to buy the best primer and the best paint. It really holds up well under that tape. Tongue in cheek, of course. All right, since the uh, last few clips, I have used a hole saw, taken that uh, to one and three quarters, and ton, 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 ton. There it is. Now, when I turn the machine on in a few minutes, this, of course, is going to rotate. Is that dangerous? Remember that uh, safety notches are banned from my videos, but I'm sure that some people are not going to like that. But if I get 100,000 or more comments, I will install this or this. But I don't believe a rag or anything else could get caught in there. So for now, wanting to conclude this project, uh, this is the way it's going to be. Just a couple comments on tapered pins before I install that big uh, wheel and that was remember it's fastened with a tapered pin and I don't think I've talked much about tapered pins but Jack Frank Franklin from North Carolina sent me this uh, complete set of tapered reamers uh, last year and you must use the correct reamer 
for the uh, pin size and in this case I measured it this uh, pin is a number four and this is a number four reamer and of course it has to be drilled out first and then reamed the correct size for a number four and that has to be done uh, after it's assembled not uh, one at a time. That is not the shaft drilled and reamed and then later on the the uh, pulley drilled and reamed. It has to be done at one time on assembly, during assembly. Now to reassemble this big pulley. Remember I had marks there, punch, punch marks and small end goes in first. Like that. Of course I couldn't find my brass hammer when I needed it the most. Tap it home and that's done. Now the bottom pulley. I deburred the shaft. There was a mark on there from the set screw and then be sure and oil everything lightly before you assemble it. Now the question is how far does that go on and I remember I put a, a, set, uh, a center punch mark back there but of course I can't see it because of the new guard but I had the foresight and uh, the date on this picture is the 14th today is the 30th so I worked on this project for two weeks longer than what I expected but the purpose of the picture here is to show you how much shaft should be exposed for the two pulleys to line up so the belt doesn't run at an angle and now I will tighten the set screw. Okay the belt is on let's give it a test run here there's none too much clearance here but enough almost like I planned it that way. I will seldom use this position of the belt anyway it'll be on the inner step but there we go. A little bit of rattle there, which I don't like. Could you get hurt on that? Will a rag catch on it? Would your shirt catch on that as you walk by? I kind of doubt it. Well, there it is on the uh, higher speed of the two, which is where I will normally keep it. And I need to touch up the paint here later and maybe repaint this cover, I don't know, depends on if I'm in the mood. And then if I get 10,000 or 20,000 comments saying that I got to cover this up, I will use either this or this or this would be the easiest one with just one screw holding it on. If not, I'll put this in my wife's kitchen drawer to try to repair for the many, many things that I have absconded with. Well, this weighs 16 pounds. Way too much. But I'm, I made it with materials that I had available. And I may need another magnet or something here to prevent rattling. There's just a little bit of rattling, but it's, it's not too bad. I think that'll hold it. I, ho I hope it doesn't bang, fall open during use. Well, this concludes this three-part video that took me two weeks to make. Leave your comments if you liked it. Now, I know nobody in the entire world probably is going to make one of these, but it might give you some ideas for a guard that you might need on a different machine than a South Bend lathe. Also, uh, many of you are armchair machinists, metal workers, and just enjoy this for the sheer entertainment value. And you have to admit, admit that this is uh, more interesting than 98% of what is offered on satellite or cable or broadcast TV of any kind. Hope you liked it. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now, and I'll see you in my next video.